Example three is going to push our patience to the max and push our physics skills to the max. We have a mass sitting on an incline with friction. It's connected via pulley to a second mass. Let's assume that the system moves in this direction. So mass two moves down, mass one moves up the slope. And we'll use our procedure for systems of connected objects to find the acceleration of both objects. So we'll start with mass one. Remember, because it's on an incline, we'll choose a coordinate system where the uh, x direction points along the slope in the direction of motion and the y direction points perpendicular to the slope. So here's the free body diagram with our funny coordinate system. There's mass one. Mass one is experiencing a bunch of forces. It's got gravity pulling straight down. And that angle theta is right here. It's between the gravity force vector and the negative y direction. If that's confusing, go check out one of my earlier lectures about tilted coordinate systems. Now there is the normal force of the ground on mass one that points perpendicular to the surface, perpendicular to the slope. There is the tension force of the rope on mass one. And there's friction force, which opposes the motion. So friction of the ground on mass one is opposite to its motion. It's going up the slope. So friction goes down the slope. Now its gravity force has components. It's got an x and a y component. If you look at that right triangle, the y component gets cosine, the x component gets sine. So let's do Newton's second law for mass one in the y direction. We need to do that so we can figure out the friction force. In the y direction, mass one is not accelerating. Y direction is perpendicular to that hill, the mass is not moving perpendicular to the hill, it's only moving up the hill. So we can say that the right-hand side of that equation is zero. But the left-hand side is not zero. It has two forces. It's got the normal force pointing in the positive y direction, and it has the y component of gravity force in the negative y direction. So that normal force equals m1 g cosine theta. Again, if you look at this right triangle, the y component is adjacent to the angle theta. So we need to know that so we can understand the friction force in a minute. Let's look at the x direction for mass one. In the x direction, we've got tension force. That's positive. And we have two forces in the negative x direction. There's friction. And there's the x component of gravity. It's this little bit right here. So 
let's fill in the formulas for friction and for gravity. Remember, friction force is mu times normal force, but we just figured out that normal force is m1g cos, th cos theta. And the gravity force is m1g sine theta, because that x component is the opposite side of this right triangle. Okay, now we're stuck because we have one equation with two unknowns. We don't know this value of tension force. We don't know the value of the acceleration. There's the cat. So, We'll pause there, we'll look at mass two, and then see what we can do. All right, for mass two, here's a free body diagram. This one's a lot easier. Standard, vertical, horizontal. Here's mass two. Fortunately, it only has two forces on it. There's gravity going down, and there's the tension force pulling up. So Newton's second law in the y direction. Says tension force is positive. Gravity force is negative. That equals m2a2y. We might as well substitute m2g for that gravity force. And once again, we are now left with an equation we can't solve because we don't know tension and we don't know acceleration. So we use some common sense and things we know about ropes and strings. The tension force is the same everywhere in this rope. So we might as well drop those subscripts and just call both of these they are at the same value. Now, the acceleration has the same magnitude for both objects, but we need to think about the coordinate systems we drew to give these the right signs. one is moving up the slope, the coordinate system we drew had up the slope being positive x. So that's positive. Mass 2 is falling down, and the coordinate system we drew down is the negative y direction. So that gets a negative sign. So now let's go back to our two equations where we were stuck and substitute in those uh, values we just figured out. There's T, and there's all this stuff. That was the friction force. This was the Y, I mean the X component of the gravity force. And then that equals M1A. And over here, we've got T minus M2G equals negative 
m to a. All right, so we've got a system of equations that we need to solve now. Here's our system of equations. And once again, I think I'll solve it by substitution. Uh, note that T equals M2G minus M2A. That comes from this equation. And now I'll substitute that into the first equation. Now we're going to get a huge pile of stuff in my big new whiteboard. Might not be big enough to fit all this. Okay, substituting this expression for t, we've got m2g minus m2a minus mu m1g cos theta, that was the friction force minus m1g sine theta, that was the gravity force, equals m1a. Now we have a few steps of algebra and we'll be done. I'm going to move this m2a over to the right side of the equation. I can simplify the right hand side of the equation and finally I can divide both sides by m1 plus m2 and I can get this result. It's a big pile of math now. But I claim that it still makes sense. And I even claim that with a little bit of thought, you can predict this. Here's what I mean. If we look at this drawing here and just think about what's happening. Gravity's pulling down on mass two. So mass 2 wants to fall down. Gravity is also pulling on mass 1. That would make it want to go this way, down the ramp. But we're assuming in this problem that mass 2 is sufficiently heavy that it, that it wins, so the system goes down this way and up that way. So the gravity force pulling on mass 2 is what makes everything go. It's what makes the system speed up or accelerate. And this other gravity force trying to pull mass 1 down the hill is fighting against it. So in this equation, we have positive m2g, which is saying that's the gravity force that's making everything speed up. It's positive. And we have this negative m1g sine theta, because that's this gravity force component pulling M1 down the hill in the opposite direction. It's this little bit right here in the free body diagram. And there's also friction. Friction always slows things down. Friction's always going to be a negative force no matter what. So here's that friction force between mass 1 and that ramp it's sitting on, or that hill. So these are the three forces involved in the problem. There's the total force, 
and it's divided by the total mass. So with a little thought, you could maybe guess this answer. And in fact, that's what we're gonna do in the next example.